the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. Oh, hello and welcome back to the Potty Plotters Plotcast Podcast. We've had a problem saying that all week, haven't we, Julia? <laughs> We've had a problem talking all week, haven't we? We've oh, been... No, I haven't. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That'll every... be the day. That'll be the day. <laughs> right. Yeah, we need to phone the emergency services if you stop talking, <laughs> I can tell you. Yeah. I did once. I had tonsillitis. Anyway, I had my tonsils out and that sorted it. But... Have you ever done a sponsored <laughs> silence? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gareth's cheering then. That's not very nice. Carry on, Elaine. It's right, your go. Thank you. OK, then. This is season two and it's episode 13. I am Elaine. And I'm Julia. And in this episode, we're going to uh, talk about moving on your tomatoes because it's uh, nearly time, actually. And I'm going to give you an update on the chard from episode 11, it was, and on um, Gareth's when we did those sliced tomatoes in episode 10. OK. We're going to talk about what to do with your dahlias. I've got success on that and you have as well. So we'll talk about that and how to tell how everything is growing. We're going to talk about planting out the beetroot seedlings and a lesson in making straw braries. Straw braries, you yes. say? Yes, so there's loads, so let's get going. OK. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can leave us a tip at ko-fi.com slash thepottyplotters. That's ko-fi.com slash thepottyplotters. And we'll love you forever. If you want to get in contact with us, you can get us via Facebook, Instagram and Twitter or X at Potty Plotters, TikTok at The Potty Plotters, email us naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk or check out the website pottyplotters.uk. And if you're wondering what all the noise is in the background, there are people moving about because we've got guests, we've got visitors actually, we have, haven't we yes, today? Yes. And uh, we are sat outside in the beer garden, birds are singing, but the wind is blowing. It's getting up. It was raining a little while ago. Have we had a day yet that it hasn't rained? No. 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 Oh, okay, sorry. Then. Right then. Well, first thing is, I want to talk to you about Gareth's sliced tomatoes. Oh, yes. Now then, Gareth, you've not got a speaking part today, but I just want you to ooh and ah over what I've got in my hand. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right then, that's all that we wanted because what we've got here are your sliced tomatoes. We did a couple of episodes ago. Do you remember they are in a recycled container here and I've had another one on the top forming a little greenhouse. And as you can now see, Gareth, that is your OR, isn't it? Mm. And um, I would say, how many do you think? I think there he's now, got Julia? about fifteen plants there, but he's not having fifteen plants oh, because he's no, he is not because he's got a small greenhouse, a six before, and he filled. We filled it too much last year, and things hadn't got room to grow. So, as a maximum, he can have two of them. <gasps> Oh, he's shaking his head. It's brutal. What well, well, do you want to tell cabbages and cucumbers? Yeah. Well, then more you of them. <laughs> more of them. These are his. <laughs> well, he can have them. <laughs> He'll he have, have them in a minute. <laughs> yeah, he can have them, but he's not putting all of them in the greenhouse, I'm telling you. No. All right, then. So, evidently... <laughs> well, we've got a lot of them, but you're not having them. So, uh, anyway, we'll grow those on, yes. Now, then, it is fair to say, though, from the slices, you can see where the seeds are growing, but they are not big enough at the moment to prick out. That means moving on to their next space because they've only got their baby leaves. It's when they get their true leaves, which are tomato leaves, that we will then start to move them into their own little plant okay. pots. OK, so at the moment, these are going to go back. I'm going to put the top back on, Julia. Oh, yes. OK, and the top can go back on and that can go back into the polytunnel for another couple of weeks. But that's the update on your tomatoes, Gareth. No good standing there shrugging your shoulders, lad, is it? Right, um, Julia, I think he's got it on him. Let's get moving. OK. So, uh, update on the chard. I'm just uh, knocking all the compost off. The chard and the cucumber seeds. Yes. Now then, the chard has shot up. Yes. Incredibly so. And... Um, it's all in the recycled, what, six by six container, I yep, would say. Yep. Only around an inch, inch and a half of 
uh, multi-purpose compost but what do we do next if at all anything because i can see they've only got pretend leaves as well when i say pretend they're not pretend they're no, real they're, but they're, they're not leaves. real they're mm, first such they're, they're, they're not, not real <laughs> <laughs> they are but they're not their true leaves so they're okay. not the leaves of the charred plant itself that you would pick and eat so what we're going to do again we're going to wait until uh, the true leaves start to appear and then we're going to prick them out and pot them on and, and possibly into cell trays or individual trays depends how many you want Elaine because we know once they get going they really do get going and can you remember when Martin Plot One planted a whole hedge of them they did but they looked brilliant they did they don't give stuck. Gareth ideas because no. he likes chard yeah but there's only so much chard you can eat isn't mm, there I'll have, mm, yeah well anyway so and the cucumber seeds now it was the first week we had nothing at all because I kept peeping in every day now people who set seeds know what I'm on about you become obsessed you, you do yeah every yeah. day you just have another peek and it's like if you creep up quietly and have a little look then maybe they will have peeped out but actually nothing nothing for a whole week and then all of them came out yep all of them at once brilliant so we're dead happy with those but yep. again they have only got two leaves they're just forming yeah they're real leaves they're true leaves yeah so again that will probably be a fortnight before we at least start to move them yeah you're not going to be pricking them out though are they because we no. planted them into their own cells because yeah. of course cucumbers don't like their bottoms being interfered with. not at all no Ooh. so when we move them into their next plot yeah. pot, pot, pot they pot, will yeah. go lock stock and barrel yes the lot. Will, yeah okay then so that's all about those dahlias well what are we doing with the dahlias elaine i've been so happy with the dahlias they've actually all at the moment uh, started to grow yes we've done it right and what we're doing rather than putting them into the soil because it's absolutely sodden up here still yeah what we've done is we've put them all into buckets and big plant pots haven't we yeah they've been fantastic but i know a certain person tapping my hand yeah gareth won't like you tapping no, no i know no. but it's been a bit like Stop that okay tapping. then yeah yeah so Somebody has been taking cuttings off somebody else's dahlias. So now you can put your head down, Julia. What have you been up to? Well, you know, share and share alike. It's your <laughs> I think it was more like steal and get away with it. I'm not damaging your plants. What I'm doing oh. is creating more siblings for them. That's what I'm doing because your plants have been thrown out lots of shoots. So I, uh, you know, you really only want about three to five leaves growing. And so I've seen yours that got six or seven. So all I'm doing really is thinning them out for you. That's what I like to think of it as. And all I've been doing is taking cuttings off your tubers. And how difficult is that? It's not that hard. I have got my scalpel or rather my old craft knife and all I've been doing is taking going back along the leaf that's developing once it's developed about three or four or four true leaves been going right back to the um, tuber and then really a very very fine slither of the tuber has come oh, away okay. and then I've popped them into some rooting powder and then I've popped them into a plant pot with multi-purpose compost I've covered them with a humidity dome so like the clear tops that you put on them and I'm just giving them a couple of weeks to settle down and take root and I have to say the ones I've done already have taken root so I'm very happy I'm going to have almost a matching display of your tuber, of your dahlias on my plot. You can say tubers. Did I tell you that I used to play one? As a child? Yeah, no. Anyway. I used to play a banjo as well. well I used what to play else did you play? Yeah. I just wanted to be a music teacher. Play anyway, up. what I play was going up. to That's say. That's what she used. To <laughs> <laughs> no, I do that now. Yeah. Um, one thing I was going to tell you was that uh, I've been to the hairdressers today. You can't oh, yeah. tell now because I, I am a bit windblown, but yeah. shorter than I was. Y yes. Not physically. <laughs> no, just that'd be nice if you were. Yeah. You won't do the greenhouses as good then. No. No, no. Right then. And um, she said to me, oh, you'd be proud of me because I've done some of them begonias that you did last year. I said, I've never done a begonia in my <laughs> life. She obviously doesn't pay attention when I'm talking to no, her. No, no. Hmm. Right then. And then I said, do you mean dahlias? Yes, she said. I've put two in buckets in the backyard. Said I, how have you done that? And she said, well, I've just put them into a bucket of compost and covered them up. Mm. Yes, I gave her that look that you are now giving yes. me, Julia. It was a shock, horror. What on earth are you on about? I said, give them me and I'll take them back with me now. So, 
All I'm going to say is dahlias as tubers are really easy to pot on, aren't they? Yes. And we've done it because of the bad weather. Yes. So normally we'd put them into the ground, yes. um, be in May, yep. but we just are bothered that it's too wet. Yes. So how do you actually know how to plant a dahlia tuber i know we've talked about it before but just reiterate that bit so to plant a dahlia tuber you need a plant pot that's just a little bit bigger than the tuber and then when you plant it you need to have room to spread it out so almost so like all them lumpy bits all the lumpy bits some of them have got fat lumpy bits some of them have we got all have julia <laughs> <laughs> and some of them have got long thin bits but basically they look like a big Hand. hand and so you need to be able to lay them as they sit naturally is what I would say so uh, sit whether they go flat or whether they sit um, a little bit pointing down but the main thing is that you have a little bit of the stem poking so upwards. the old stem from the old last stem. year yeah. and you can see it's an old stem because yeah. it stands erect yes that's and we'll right. leave it at that yeah okay then then what do you do I just give them a little bit of a drink from the bottom in the plant pot so just pop them in a tray full of water let them take up a little bit of water and then that is enough really to get the tuber to start growing and do you cover the um stalk that's poking no up or no not? so that is the little bit that you leave poking out yes that's right and also about labeling most important oh isn't yeah because they're so different aren't they but you can't tell it's like any plant you can't tell once it starts to grow what variety it is unless you're a real expert have you labeled the stolen ones that you've had off my plot yes i have thank you you that's labeled okay. them them very well I so i was able to copy all right thanks the plotcast podcast with the potty plotters in front of me here i've got some uh, beetroot seedlings now then we oops now then that was almost attached <laughs> to the that was almost attached to his slice you know he's now going to take charge yeah, of those no, isn't he no, yeah no. <gasps> okay then so what we've got is um a tray full of cylindra beetroot and the cylindra beetroot you can see now have shot up and yeah. the great thing is julia it's only taken since uh, the end of march so these have been slow to get going as yeah. well they weren't happy but they are now and as you can see they've got their true leaves that are now coming this is in a recycled square container filled with multi-purpose compost and all i've done is i've scattered leaves uh, sorry leaves, leaves seeds, seeds I yeah. should say around an inch apart over the top and they've come lovely haven't they yeah. these are out my greenhouse so what are you going to do with them now Elaine right so what I'm going to do is I keep as you know in my handbag a spoon yes. it's a, just a thing yes. so all I'm going to do is I'm going to get a spoon pop it underneath right underneath yeah. into the bottom of this compost and as you can see oh, yeah, I can I've see the root roots system underneath. yeah so you're covered in compost that. as well but yeah. roots underneath <laughs> yeah. it's all over his microphone I tell you what <laughs> he's not going to be happy by the time he leaves <laughs> here is he no. so uh, and then all you do is you pop that up get the spoon underneath and then individually I will plant those every three to four inches apart on my plot okay. I will put a line out as well so I'll follow the line yeah. with these beetroot but that is enough there for at least one row and when will they be ready to eat not until, until about eight weeks so oh. they will take between eight and twelve weeks Ooh. which is a long time yeah but Julia it's so cold out here unless we get a heat wave in the next few weeks I don't know what we can do. Mm. You've got some in your polytunnel. I've got some in my polytunnel. That'll see us through, Elaine. Well, it will, because you've stolen my dahlias. I might nick your beetroot. OK. Fair dues. Fair dues. Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk. we always ask people to get in touch if you recall julia yes. which is where we always struggle one person has been in touch not only has she been in touch but we've actually invited her over here and, and she's she is, she is. <laughs> I know, that's very brave How of her, very isn't? very naive of yeah. her angela hickson and angela you got in touch with us over the border in leicester because of your 
Well, what do we call it? Your bra crafts? Your interest in bras? Tell us all about it. That's it. I have a fetish with bras. Yes. Oh, anyway, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I um, take unwanted bras that would normally end up probably in landfill. There's charity shops don't want them. And I craft with them along with some of my lovely friends. And we then go on to sell the items which make money for breast cancer charities. And the important thing there, though, Angela, is that until we actually met you, I didn't realise that charity shops won't take bras yeah some of them will take them for weight where they might send them off to be recycled okay, okay. But, and i think there is an odd charity shop who might sell them but the majority of, of them because it's underwear won't sell them no so how did you get into it so i found three of my daughter's bras after she'd left home that she'd left in a drawer i was sorting it out and they were really pretty so i thought i'll take them to the charity shop and they said no we don't take underwear so i thought i'm not i'm not going to put those in the bin i'll come home and as i'm an absolutely mad crafter i thought i'd have a go at making something so i did i made um, a couple of things from it and the idea was born maybe these could be sold to raise money for breast cancer see that's not normal in itself is it no. when you think about <laughs> I'm it not normal. Why, why, why would you think oh three bras i'm going to make something out of those well you've got to do something i mean what would make you think putting strawberries in your bra really yes What's the difference between <laughs> us stuffing our bras with strawberries and Angela turning them into craft things? Point taken, Julia. Yeah. One nil. <laughs> OK, then. Angela, so what have you been making? Let's right, have a look. so first of all, I've got you a present. So oh, all these nice. presents along. So I've got one Thank for you. you. Uh-huh. One for you, Lane. Thank and you. And I've even bought one for Gareth. So. Oh. So if you have a look at those, they are say. little bra angels. So oh. they're little angels and they've got a small amount of bra lace around them to make the tutu um and they've got that lovely little poem if you'd like to read it out maybe wherever you may wander wherever you may roam may this angel charm protect you keep you safe and guide you home oh now then we don't want to be going home too early though because husbands (laughs) don't expect that do you think we could have it direct guide you to the allotment <laughs> so can you do a different one yes we can we can we do bespoke yeah we don't want to go home do we no well no. that's beautiful because it's a little angel of about one and a half inches and it's a tiny piece of blue and gray pretty lace with angel wings that are made of metal and a little blue bead on a hook attached to some well what is that is that elastic no it's just silver cord silver cord it's absolutely beautiful and that is um clipped into a piece of card with our poem on in a little um net there. A oh, little excuse net. me, organza bag. Oh, sorry. Organza bag. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, net. Now, net's an organza net. Now then, go now. for Elaine. Ooh. I don't know. Well, as our flowers <laughs> start to develop, we can pop that over the head and it'll stop them getting damaged. Oh, there you Top go. Top tip then. there. So, and there it says bra crafts on it. Well, that's absolutely wonderful. But how do you get... Um, I mean, do you sell these? Yeah, what do they you sell for four pounds. You can right. get them on our website www.brocraft.com or at craft fairs. So, but yeah, they sell for four pound, and all the money goes to breast cancer charities. That's so, marvellous. So, how? What made you decide to, to donate to the uh, bra cancer? I've had breast bra cancer, 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 cancer myself. Breast cancer. <laughs> breast, breast cancer. I've had breast cancer myself. Right. Um, my grandma had um, breast cancer and died from it. So. But if I'm absolutely honest, because I love crafting and I just enjoyed making it, and then I thought, oh, because I'm going to be doing a lot, I can actually uh, combine my hobby with making some money. So it's win win, really. That's wonderful, it's isn't brilliant. it? Yeah. yeah, and not a lot of people would have heard of you, I'm sure. And you go all over the place doing sales, I presume. What yeah, do you so do? I started a year ago, and as I say, I, I, when I thought, oh, this is okay, and my friend started to start buying the products. Um, I started to get them to craft so I've got a friend Karen who's come along with me today and I'm, she started to make a few things and then another friend Cherie and then I might even get you two to make something so oh. it can literally be anything so if you're into knitting you could knit a little teddy bear and then just get a bra that nobody wants cut, cut the lace up and make a little tutu up for it um, so really as long as it contains a small amount of bra lace or uh, anything if it, for example i'm just showing you these these are lovely earrings they they're, are. they're green and there's there's three rings on those and they're all from the bra finding so oh. where your bra strap joins your bra you have the little round ring so they're cut off and made into earrings that's, that's just amazing and yeah if, if you imagine all the different colorful bras that you get yeah. you know, we can get some amazing different colors um so yes yeah, so we make earrings 
Brilliant. People um, would not believe that. No, would no. And then the bra wires. They were a while <laughs> oh. before we could think about. Oh, what now to we've do had with a those. few bra wires in we, our time. We had an incident <laughs> last did on air, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. 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 It poked Elaine yeah. under yeah. the eye. You know how oh. they just come out now and again, don't they? Elaine, you could have whipped it out and made a card. Well, what I did, I whipped it out, shocked Gareth. After he picked himself <laughs> up off the floor, what we actually said was that we could make some mini cloches yeah. and make some oh, cloches. So go. we were going to put them to use, but that's a better use. That's a beautiful yeah, so it's a card. washing line. We make a washing line out of it and then hang a mini bra onto it. So we use those as, as washing lines with a little saying, good friends are like bras, they never leave you hanging. <laughs> <laughs> now, Angela, how did you find us and what is it we can do for you okay so i found you because my friend karen was listening to uh, twiggy on the radio oh, yeah and uh, he was interviewing a lady and she knew i was after celebrities to donate the bras because then i thought i could make celebrity bra um, items um and uh, she heard this the model on the radio so she said oh why don't you sort of give a Twiggy a ring or a text, which I did do. From that, Twiggy interviewed me and mentioned the Potty Plotters. And um, because I'm not from Derby, I hadn't heard of you, ladies, but now I have. I think you're fabulous. Um, and he told me about your straw braries. Yeah. And I thought, I need to get in touch with you because I'd like to know how to make a straw brari. And you brought bras with you uh-huh. yeah. of every colour of the rainbow, and I've already snaffled one, well Julia. Done. That's lovely. And the reason that I've got this one, it's um, I would say cream with polka dot, lots of lace round it. But the main thing is big cups. Yeah, we need a big cup to be able to fill them to support the strawberry. Absolutely. When I see ladies with big boobs I, I can just think of all the nice things that you can make out of that bra lace yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean we've got a lady on site who's got massive ones oh and, I bet she'd make some lovely items <laughs> well she could make a tent I don't know that much more and we could all sit under it but there you go so what we would do now is we've got plenty of strawberries strawberries, strawberry yes, plants yeah. that uh, Julia's been looking after yeah, well, this last week well what I can say is Jerry was having a right clear out of his plot and he got hundreds of strawberries and I thought hey up we can we can make use of them so i've potted them on and i'm getting a nice root system established with these strawberry plants that he just to be brutally lobbed them to one side so they are salvaged but now what we'll do is we'll cut a slit in the uh, bras so where this is padded the padded bras are brilliant right. because it's the inserts that we want to take out so all that we do is snip across the top here yeah and we get into the inside of the bra then we pull the inner from the outer and that actually has a little cup inside yep. then all we do is we've got loads of compost we yep. fill it full of compost and pop the strawberry plant on the top and then backfill with compost we do it for both cups and then we simply hang by stapling the straps or um we've done it before with um nails haven't yeah we? or and if whack you, some nails yeah, in. or even if you've got like hanging brackets you could put two next yeah. door Brilliant next to idea. one another and i mean the thing is that we're here quite often and we can water them quite regularly because obviously they do take quite a bit of water in especially when they're swelling with the fruits but what i would suggest if you are making some for people to take away perhaps get some swell gel which will hold the water a little bit more okay and uh, and that will help uh, keep the water and save water in as often as we would perhaps do but and it would fill the cup out oh, ah, it would <laughs> now they would look like loveliness wouldn't they i was going to say something else and i forgot where we were but they would look absolutely lovely but honestly they make people titter i think that's the appropriate yes, word yeah as they go round the allotments and that's what we always do for open days so people out there if you've got an open day coming up why not do this where do you want people to send bras to if they look on our website they'll see it says donate your bra and we have got several places around um, around the country now really oh. uh, going over to ireland actually now and um somebody in Malta's just started crafting with bras as well um, but because we're local in Derby there's there's two places I know in Melbourne but obviously people come in all the time forward saying oh I don't mind being a bra donation point so if you're a business and you, you don't mind having one of our bra donation boxes that would be great you could come forward um, so say so the public can just go and have a look to see where their nearest drop-off point is for the bras I think Julia yeah. do you need yours on today love? <laughs> yes because um <laughs> I think I could make some nice straw bras. <laughs> Would the sports bra work? <laughs> you never know till you have a go. 
If you'd like to support the podcast, you can leave us a tip at ko-fi.com slash thepottyplotters. That's ko-fi.com slash thepottyplotters. And we'll love you forever. Well, thanks ever so much to Angela. I mean, not only for uh, coming all this way over here, physically to meet us, thinking yeah. that we're some sort of celebrity, well, we're not. But what we will do is we will give a shout out yeah. and remind everybody yet again, World Naked Gardening Day on May the 4th. Yeah. <laughs> Get them out there. That's all I will say. Get them and, out there. Um, Use it as an opportunity to have a new bra <laughs> and uh, send them to Angela. And uh, we've got ours off now. And uh, yeah. What are we doing next week, Elaine? Freezing! <laughs> <laughs> and also, we're going to be looking at uh, sunflowers again, and um, we're going to be sewing some squashes and courgettes. Oh, when I say sewing, sewing, we've done a lot of sewing this week, okay, haven't we? Okay, yeah. I don't mean sewing as S-E-W, as in oh, what Angela does, yeah. but sewing, sewing seeds, yeah. S-O-W. That's what we're going to be Thank doing. Thank you for that If you don't know about it, it doesn't matter. No, no. nobody really understands what it is that I talk about anymore. Anyway, I'm going to get these off. Okay. You're taking yours off. It's off. <laughs> <laughs> the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters is an Amberland Media production.